I got more animals to fill the void in my life. You're probably asking yourself, what kind of animal did you get now? It's an animal we already have a couple of. That's right, I got ducks and they're out of water. You're probably asking yourself why I got more ducks. Look how cute they are. In all seriousness though, I have been wanting to get a couple more ducks. My ducks that I just put out on pasture are doing amazing. Gotta be so careful that I don't spill this. I keep spilling it. There you guys go. So like my adult ducks, these ducklings have to have water at all times. They also have to have the choice to be able to submerge their whole body underwater. So they ran out of water and I just got home from work and got their water all filled and they have enough food till the morning. I bought a small bag of chick feed. And once I start to get to the end of that, I will start putting in some of our feed and then maybe I'll get another small bag, we'll see. So today we have a couple things we need to do. I would like to point out that I cleaned this building. I actually didn't intend to get these ducks. I called our local farm store and they told me they were really cheap and they had some left. So I went and picked them up. I actually ended up getting some footage from the day we went and picked the ducks up. So I'll play that footage now. Where are my ducks? They might be in the back. I have to fill the empty void in my life. <laughs> okay. They were all over. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh. Have a problem. <laughs> of all the problems you can have, this is not a terrible one. Be boy. really awesome to go get those ducks and I really appreciate that my aunt ran me up there to go get those. So because it was a little bit of more surprise, I came home and that building was a mess and I ended up cleaning it. I didn't get any footage of me cleaning the building, but I got lots of footage of the baby ducklings. One of the things we have to do today is deal with the bratty moo crew. As you can see, they got out. They're in need of new grass and they're eating this tall stuff over here. It's also got some shade over here, but they're messing a bunch of stuff up. They knocked my feeder over. This feeder is so terrible that I love it. All right, come on, moo crew. I promise I'm getting ready to move you. You just have to come with me first. Excuse me, thank you. There we go. Now she knows I have popcorn. These ducks are doing amazing. Come on, both of you guys. There you go. I'll take that back. Come on, Mukuru. We knocked it out of the way. Hi, Oinkers. Hello, Carl. Carl, are you having a good day? How about definitely not, Carl? Are you having a good day, buddy? I noticed that with the Mangalitsa, especially this time of year when they're wallowing in their mud a lot, it seems as if the mud gets stuck in their hair a lot which is okay, I don't think they mind. And as we get more into the fall, that will slowly start to go away. For now, their hair is a mess. Enjoy your popcorn, Lucy. I'm gonna go get your next fence set up. So we're getting into that time of the year where the sun can be deceiving. For instance, it's probably about 65, 70 degrees out here, but you could definitely mistake it for 90. Hi, Sadie. Put that there and maybe I won't forget it. You want me to pet you? Why couldn't you have done this the day I had a camera on you? If you guys haven't seen that video yet, I actually just put that out last night. I put a video out about me putting a camera on Sadie and she ended up napping almost the entire time. But now you want to follow me around and hang out. Huh. Probably just because it's not as hot. So as we move the Moo Crew today, I have a topic I want to talk about. Firstly, we need to pull this off of all these. This one got kind of tangled up. The topic I want to talk about today is something that I feel is important, especially because a lot of homesteaders follow me and people who want to homestead maybe in the future. There's that all dealt with. When you start a homestead, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get every single kind of animal you've ever dreamed of. So maybe you're thinking, oh yeah, I've always wanted pigs. 
Then you think, oh, we need some chickens. And then you think, oh, we have room for a cow. Let's get a cow. And then you want to get sheep. And before you know, you have every farm animal imaginable. When it comes to starting a homestead, you're not 100% sure yet that you want all these animals. And just because they're cute, you might want to get them. But my recommendation is take it very, very slow. This fencing does not want to cooperate today. Got the real fencing. So why do I recommend you take it slow? Because if you think about it, you're just getting started with homesteading. And imagine you get all these animals and you realize after a while that it's too much. Then there's a good chance you're gonna have to sell all your animals. I wanna go right in front of the chicken coop, like right here. And obviously you're going to develop a bond with these animals. And the last thing you're gonna wanna do is sell them off. So for instance, with our homestead, we started with chickens. So we have had chickens off and on even before we lived where we do now. So chickens weren't that tough to get into because we kind of already knew what we were doing. So in the same year, we got pigs and cows. They were a couple months apart from when we got the cows and the pig, but that is not something I recommend doing. And the first cows we had were not a milk cow. So with our first three cattle and they were bottle babies, so they were pretty nice to us. They did end up getting out a lot because they wanted to be close to us. After that, we learned our lesson with bottle calves and we ended up getting four Angus cattle. Angus are wild. You, normally they're raised out in a pasture with their mother and barely have any human interaction. And we raised them on pasture and we had a really, really hard time with them. They ended up getting out and going over three miles. So last year, after learning our experience with four Angus, we ended up getting two Angus, which did a lot better. But this year we decided to get Lucy, our Ayrshire milk cow, and just raise up her calf. All our stepping posts are set up. Now it's time to run the wire. Alrighty, that's all our fencing set up. It was kind of the same with our pigs. And this year we have a lot less pigs than we have the last couple years. But why has it gone down? Remember how I had to set this line up last time so that they couldn't get across here, so I ran it this whole way? So here's my plan. I'm going to get their trough filling up and then I'm gonna be very, very quick about it and I'm gonna take it all across this way and we're just really gonna hope they don't go through there. We'll go grab the hose first. The reason we've had less animals over the years with cows and pigs is because we got into this way too quickly. It's unfortunate and I see it a lot. And now we have it down to a number where it's a lot more manageable. But back about a year or two ago, we had a lot more animals. The morning chores take me about an hour. Back last year or even the year before, they took me an hour and a half to two hours. Obviously that was if I did all the chores by myself. But at the same time, it was a lot for me to do. And it was definitely because we just got too many animals way too quickly. That is ultimately why we scaled our homestead down. Though I see it happen with homesteaders every single day. They get too many animals to start with and they end up either burning out and selling off a lot of their animals. Unfortunately, some stop altogether. Thankfully, we didn't let that happen to us. We ended up scaling our homestead down. We have less cows this year, less pigs, less chickens, and it's become much, much more manageable. So for instance, maybe your first year, just get into some chickens. And then next year, maybe get some goats or something. But if you don't and you go too quickly, you may scale up too fast and unfortunately decide to quit. So now, maybe if we wanted to in the future get, for instance, some sheep, or I would love to get one or two geese. With that, we're very, very careful not to get into it too quickly. And how I like to do that is we wanna start only introducing one new animal to our homestead every year. So maybe next year we'll get two or three geese. That'll be it for the homestead for new animals, but we'll have different pigs next year. Obviously Molly will be here, but these three are all pigs for meat. I think it's a great system to follow by. Oh. By doing that, you make sure you don't scale your homestead up way too fast. Let's get them moved into here. That's my topic I wanted to talk about today. I think it really is an important topic though. So my cow Lucy and her calf are pouting right now. Why are they pouting, you might ask? They're upset because their pasture they're in right now is pretty much out of grass that they want to eat. Because of that, they're not happy. Little do they know, I have a whole new pasture for them set up. Come on guys, let's go. Into your new pasture, you guys go. There you guys go, enjoy your new pasture. Let's give them their bowl. Here's your bowl, Lucy, it doesn't have anything in it though. Oh yeah, she's already dropped some poop in the pasture. That stuff's like gold. Why do I say Lucy's poop is like gold? Because it fertilizes our pasture and it helps new fresh grass grow up. 
So I'm trying to move the duck stuff through the pasture. I don't want to leave it in one spot because they make a pretty big mess. You can see this is just from two days and they've already like pushed all this grass down. Well guys, that's today's video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.